Assalamualaikum and good day everyone. Hi, this is Ms. Zahira and in this video, I'll be showing you on how you can do estimation for ratio of two population variances using confidence interval. So in this video, uh, you'll be looking at problems that involves two different population, right? Two population. Now, what do I mean by two population? Let's say you have a machine that produces one meter rulers or machine that produces um, 100 centimeter rulers, okay? And this machine needs to be sent for service. But before you send the machine for service, you collect a random sample of rulers and also after the service, you collect another random sample of rulers and you measure the length of these rulers. Now, listen carefully. Rulers produced by the machine before service and rulers produced by the machine after service are two different populations. This is a different population and this is also a different population. So now you have a case study involving two different populations. So these are the given data, which is the length of those rulers that you have collected before and after the service. And by having this data, you can do several analysis. For example, you can use it to find a 95% confidence interval for ratio of population variances produced by the machine before and after the service. Hence, interpret your answer. Okay, so in this particular problem, we are interested to know about to find the confidence interval for ratio of population variances. So this is not about population mean, it's not about population proportion, but this is about population variances, a particularly ratio of population variances. So now I need you to go and open up your formula book, find me which is the formula to find the confidence interval for ratio of population variances. So in the formula book, you'll be looking at this title here. A confidence interval for sigma square 1 over sigma square 2. Okay, so re remember, this is ratio, so it involves two population. So then you're going to have two uh, sigma square in your notation. Okay, so can you find it? It should be on page 7. Ada ke ada? Ada kan? Okay, so this is how the formula looks like. Alright, uh, let's have a closer look at it. In this formula, you have, um, this is the lower limit of the confidence interval and this is the upper limit of the confidence interval and in each um, limit, you have to find the sample variance for both population 1 and population 2 and please take note that the critical value here uh, for the lower limit critical value is different compared to the upper limit critical value. In the lower limit, you have 1 minus alpha over 2, but in the upper limit, it's only alpha over 2. And now, the critical value comes from the F distribution table. It's no longer Z table, it's not T table, it's not chi-square table, but it's F distribution table, which I will show you later where to find this table, don't worry. Okay, and what else should we, should we be looking at? Mm, this one, new. New 2, new 1. And upper limit also new 2 followed by new 1, okay? Uh, new 2 is N2 minus 1 and new 1 is N1 minus 1. Okay, so please check. Can you find this information from the book? Yes, you can also find information about new in on page 7. So yeah, no, no need to worry about that. Moving on. Uh, in this particular problem about the machine that we talked about just now, we have two different population, right? We have data from before a service and data from after service. So let's denote data from before service as population one and let's denote data from after service as population two. So by doing so, I'm gonna change the, no the notation in this formula so that one becomes B for before and two becomes a for after. So my formula is going to change and looks like this. Okay, I find it easier for me when I change the formula in such a way so that I am clear that, okay, at the top, I want before data and at the bottom, I want it to be after data. And the rest just follow through. Okay, now uh, let's have a look. What information do we need from the problem in order to 
find the confidence interval. We need to find what is the sample standard deviation for both population and we also need to find these two different critical value in which uh, in order to find this critical value we need to know what is alpha, what is uh, sample size for population before and what is the sample size for population after. And yes, we're going to be looking at this critical value from the F distribution. So let's have a look at the problem again. Uh, you have this data here. Okay, so from this, what info can we get? So obviously, you can know you can uh, get that the sample size for before service is 10 and the sample size for after service is 12. And from the 95% confidence level here, you can immediately get that significance level is 0.05. Okay, what about S? Can you find S in this problem? It's not clearly stated what is the sample standard deviation, but you can uh, easily get it from the calculator, right? So just input this data into your calculator and then make sure you punch on the right option to get the, the value for sample standard deviation. And be careful, do not uh, mistakenly punch the option for uh, population standard deviation. Okay, so after you do that with your calculator and all, so you're going to get this information here. Okay, from the calculator, you're going to get S. And then from the value that you obtain, you can just square and get variance. Variance, okay. Now, so let's have a look at the formula again. So this one is, sorry, excuse me. This one is done, this one is done, you also got alpha, you have n, you also get n for a. So what's left for us to do is to find the critical value. So let's move on to the critical value. Now you have two different critical value here. One is for the lower limit and one is for the upper limit. So let's go through one by one. Okay, this is the formula that we have, right? So uh, first thing that I'll... I would, I would do is to substitute this information into the formula of this critical value, okay? So let's do for the upper limit first. Now, alpha over 2 becomes 0 0.025 and a minus 1 becomes 11 and b minus 1 becomes 9. So now it's time for us to go and find this critical value. You, you should be looking at the F distribution table. So everyone, please open up your formula book and flip through, uh, you search through and find ta table 7, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, it's table, table 7. It's on page 40 and for F distribution table, uh, it starts from page 40 up until page 55. Right, so there are so many pages for this uh, distribution. Why is it so? I'm gonna show you why. Okay, so we're gonna find the critical value for 0 0.025119. I need you to find the page which has, sorry, excuse me, which has alpha 0 0.025 at the top. Okay, exactly as how. Uh, as, as shown in my slide here, it's written alpha equal to 0 0.025 because this that is what we want to we, we need to find here. And then you there are two values here, 11 and 9. So the first value that you see, the first number goes to the top. You need to find 11 at the top row and you find 9 at the side column. Okay, 11 at the top row and 9 at the side column. By matching these two values, you can get the critical value, which is 3.9121. Okay, was that too quick? Then you can just rewind this video, okay? Now moving on, that is our critical value for the upper limit. Let's go to the critical value for lower limit here is 1 minus upper over 2. So that gives us 0.975. <clears throat> And here again, 11, 9. Now, same trick. You're going to do the same thing. Uh, now, go on. Go through your formula book from page 40 until page 55. Now, tell me, can you find any page that has 
alpha is equal to 0 0.975 written on that page. Okay, so I bet you can't find it, right? Because it is not provided in this book. Because if we were to provide you uh, the table for all alpha, then this book will be too thick. And then, yeah, it's going to be too expensive as well. So, uh, so you cannot find that table from this book, but there is an alternative way that we can do to still find the value for this critical value, even though you don't have the table of alpha equal to 0 0.975. Okay, so the alternative is this value is also equivalent to 1 over F0.025911. Okay, so how do I do this? So this requires some memorization. Okay, if you need if you need to, please memorize this. What happened here is from 0 0.975 it changed to 0 0.025. What happened here is from 1 minus alpha over 2, which is the original formula, we change it to alpha over 2. Okay, so that's it. And then the next change is um, from 11, 9 here, they swap with each other and becomes 9, 11. Okay, let's, let's have a closer look. 0 0.975 or maybe 1 minus alpha over 2 becomes alpha over 2. 11, 9 swaps with each other and becomes 9, 11. That's it. Okay, so now we need to find the critical value for 0 0.025911. So you're going to do the same thing as you did for the upper limit. You go on and find the page which has alpha equal to 0 0.025 written on top of the table. Okay, so it's the same page that we used previously. But now, uh, even though we are using the same page, but we are, we are no longer looking at the same number. You know why? Because now we have 9, 11. So what happened is you need to find 9 at the top row and 11 at the side column and then you get your critical value which is 3.5879 the first number always go to the top row and the second number goes to the side column okay so this critical value is equivalent to 3.5879 so our critical value for lower limit is 1 over 3.5879 so yeah now we have all the information that we need in order to use the formula so what's left to do is just to substitute all this information substitute all this value right into the formula carefully and finally you will get the confidence interval that you can use to estimate your ratio of two population variances okay so the ratio is from 0 0.9 until 12.7 all right uh, should there be any units here no no right because this is variance variance has no unit but a uh, standard deviation has unit but not for variance and the interpretation here would be that we are 95% confident that the ratio of population variances for the length of rulers produced by the machine before and, up, before and after service lies within 0 0.9081 and 12.7459. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think that's, I think that's very clear. Okay, so this is the solution for our problem right um, why don't we take a look at the formula again so this is the formula that you can easily find in your formula book so there's no need to memorize in order to use this formula you need to find what is the sample variance for both population and you also need to find two different critical value one for the lower limit and one for the upper limit and and please also do remember that in order to find the critical value for the lower limit here you need to change it to the alternative formula which is uh, 1 over f alpha over 2 new 1 new 2 okay so you can also uh, use this formula down here which is exactly the same formula it's only that we have changed from f1 of F1 minus alpha over 2, new 2, new 1, it has been changed to the alternative formula, which is 
1 over f of over 2 nu 1 nu 2. It's exactly the same thing. It's up to you which formula you want to use. But this one is provided in your formula book. And this is an alternative that you can uh, try to memorize and uh, do it on your own, right? Uh, yes, I think that is it for this video. That That is it that I would want to explain in this video. Uh, there will be a part 2 for chapter 2.7. So make sure you go and check that video out later. And because in part 2, I'll be explaining to you about the one-sided lower bound confidence interval and one-sided upper bound confidence interval for ratio of population variances. Okay, so before I end this video, I would encourage you to try out these exercises. Okay, uh, this you can find this exercise in your module and the answer is it's also provided so go home and have fun with it try it out and do remember to check out my video on chapter 2.7 part 2 see you in the next video